What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Game Informer shutting down. They are seizing operations, you know, in terms of physical, in terms of digital. They're gone. 33 years. And, you know, I just want to make this video talking about, I mean, getting the news out there, obviously, but uh, honestly, quite the shock. I mean, over the years, obviously, they've moved from more physical to digital. And so while my physical subscription ended like seven, eight years ago, and I just never kind of renewed it. Um, you know, I, I've assumed and it looked like they were doing a pretty good job of kind of switching over between in fact maybe they were doing some of the better jobs of switching from kind of the legacy stuff that they used to do to trying to embrace like the newer stuff right still doing kind of like the cover features right and, like what's the big game of the month and having that exclusivity and all that jazz and uh, I don't know just this past month I think they did Dragon Age the Veil Guard like they were the ones that was giving us info the only ones that was giving us info on that game so I just want to talk a little bit about it. You know, I, I've been very, very harsh to game journalists and, you know, uh, the Kotakus of the world. I think some of them don't really even need to be around anymore, to be quite honest with you. But this one actually hurts. Like, I'm being genuinely honest, genuinely honest. Game Informer shutting down hurts. Maybe it's because of, like, the legacy and the length of time. I mean, to go three decades with them and then to now continue in the gaming industry without them feels weird. It feels different. And, you know, honestly, just on, like, a personal side, I kind of grew up with them. You know, I've, I've kind of told the story of how I have gotten into more of, like, the modern games, right? Like, I joined the PS3 era. I joined in 2009. And I really did two things when I first kind of started, right? IGN and Game Informer. IGN, I think, has slipped massively, obviously, from back then, and, you know, the podcast Beyond the World with Greg and Colin and all them, but just, you know, I watched the Batman Arkham Asylum review, and that's how I got into, that's how I knew kind of of Batman's uh, almost existence in that way, so, you know, IGN was very important to me, and Game Informer, you know, when I started to get games from GameStop for the PS3, and I would buy my own, you know, I got games my birthday and Christmas, right? Anything else was up to me to save money to do or rent, right? But Ga GameStop was the place. And, you know, that's that'll always be important, I think, to a lot of people. And then you get the subscription service, you know, for Game Informer. And I still have actually several issues, actually many, probably like, oh my God, I had the, I had it for probably like three, four years, I'd say easily, if not longer. I, mean, I think I kind of took some breaks from it, you know, over time, but, you know, I really appreciated it. And, I kind of liked like their style, right? Like it was just, it was sometimes outdated, especially as the digital age got going, right? Because the digital age would be like, oh, okay, you can get these news stories immediately. And it's actually why very early on, I kind of respected Kotaku because I always felt they were faster. Kotaku would get to the news quicker than say like an IGN. They would always kind of be delayed for whatever reason. Obviously Kotaku fell off a cliff or something, but you know, Game Informer would be the most delayed, right? Because you're getting it kind of late, but it's going over like 30, 40, 50 games, whatever it might be. They'd have their cover thing. You would read all of this exclusive info on this new game. It'd be like six, seven, eight pages. You'd see the new images. I mean, I'm just describing what a Game Informer, you know, issue is, but it was important. It was really, really cool. And again, I think as time has gone on, they've done a pretty good job of transitioning. Like they had to leave that behind. Obviously, you know, they had to do what pretty much local newspapers do, right? Where they still do them. Probably nobody on planet Earth even does that or like buys them. But then they also have the digital side where they actually have to like, you know, fend for themselves and make some money. So, you know, and again, even from my harsh, you know, kind of criticism, I've never had too much of a problem. You know, if you hear me talk, Polygon, I, like Kotaku's the worst, right? But like Kotaku, Polygon, GameSpot can be pretty bad. IGN has slipped. I don't think IGN is the worst, but they've definitely slipped in some, I guess in some circumstances, right? Not necessarily all, but you know, there's a lot of bad ones. There definitely are. And and honestly, I, I'd never pay too much attention to Game Informer, kind of because I felt like they, they stuck to their lane, right? I felt they were relatively good. They gave value for what they were doing. I always kind of appreciated their work. So even in that, you know, and I have, I've been very harsh. I think Kotaku has made some grave mistakes and some things that have made me quite angry. I mean, also some of these sites like go after people, go after YouTubers, all that stuff. People that work at these sites have some nasty things to say or are just nasty people. Game Informer, at least to my you know knowledge, 
was never as bad or even bad at all compared to, you know, some of those other ones out there. So I feel bad because I almost feel like, I mean, my, my honest opinion is like, I feel like we're losing one of the good ones. You know I mean? I have a, I have a list of a couple that are still around that I go on, you know, every couple of days just to kind of check out. Some of them are actually slipping to be honest with you, but you know, there's a couple of good ones out there and it sucks when like, you know, you have a Kotaku that is falling apart and changing leadership and selling for like 10% of what they sold for last time. But Kotaku, Kotaku, I I don't I think Game Informer's been around longer than Kotaku, but like Kotaku's lasting longer. Kotaku made it out of this longer than something like a game. It, it's it's crazy, but no, the legacy of Game Informer is so powerful. Honestly, those issues, I wonder because we never really had something like this, right? Because well, maybe we have because there was other magazine things at the time. So I guess maybe there's some comparables. With Game Informer like completely gone, and even over the last couple of years with it going more to like the digital age, I've seen like I you know the sites I go on for my physical games, like when I try to do like the third party stuff, I've seen Game Informer issues, and again I, I have plenty of them. I probably have like thirty plus, right? But it's like some of them I actually don't have, and some of them are pretty cool, and it, you know just. Maybe because of the art, right? Just kind of have the art there. Um, it's like, I wonder if those are going to go up because normally they're like 5 to $10. I wonder if it goes higher now because Game Informer's gone. But it sucks. It definitely sucks. It's, it's not something I even expected because I, I know GameSpot is in a very bad spot. They are probably next. I mean, they're not like the game journalism side of things. So it's like you can't really compare them to like the IGNs of the world. But in terms of like companies that you can kind of see the end coming, you've seen the end coming for a long time, GameSpot it might be be like top five in, in every company. Every company on planet Earth, GameSpot might be up there. And, and that is also sad. It's also, they've also slipped massively, but also like things kind of out of their control as well. So I guess I should have seen that coming. But to be honest, I always just assumed, I don't know. Sometimes I forget that they were even linked. Sometimes I just think, well, Game Informer is kind of doing its own thing is probably generally okay. But it, it should also be, and I'll end with this, it should also be like another alarm though. While, you know, again, I, I think they were better than many other of the journalist sites out there, right? So it's not like I'm using them as like a punching bag. This should be an example that, like things are changing. Things continue to change. And if Game Informer can go away, if Game Informer can get shut down, it might be because of GameSpot, right? But if the online game journalism scene is going in the way that we all see it, and if a Titan, and it is a Titan, there was a Titan, of Game Informer gets shut down, these other sites that are especially messing around, these sites that are just kind of jokes and are just somehow still around, they better watch themselves because like, I don't want people to have no income. I don't want people to be on, on the streets, right? Fix yourself. Fix your site. Fix your writing coverage, right? And, and get better. Because if it can happen to Game Informer, what's stopping it? And I think it will. We've talked about this, right? I think still, we're still in obviously very bad times. I think you can easily still see some gaming sites shut down, some gaming, you know, journalist sites shut down in the next year or so. So, like, it should be a warning for those that are still messing around, and they have messed around, and they probably still will, will mess around, right? Get your act together, because if something like Game Informer can go, you can go too. It should honestly scare them into action. Now, some things are out of their control. Economy, out of their control. The way that ads are done nowadays, out of... The talent, though, is in their control, right? Like how good or bad the coverage is and what they – that is in their control. Everything else isn't, which is, you know, and I would say that. That's fair to say, right? So there you go. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Bell icon turned on. I hope to see you all on the next one.